Hello and welcome! Uh, my name is Patrice, I'm a music mixing engineer and as you know for some time I've been mixing in Dolby Atmos. Um, that's an every day a new discoveries and that's what I want to share with you and today I would like to talk about beds because I had a very interesting conversation with my good friend Eric some time ago. Uh, he's creating podcasts and he wants to work with binaural audio which are, is really something really great uh, for podcasts and he recently uh, turned to Atmos in order to create his podcast and that's really really a great thing. And we talked about beds. What might be the use of beds for music? And personally, the more tracks I mix in Atmos, and I would be very glad to have your comments about anything uh, in the section down below. Uh, the more I mix in Atmos and the more I tend to use a greater number of objects. And I tend to really treat many audio sources as objects, but still the beds are useful. But if we turn to the Dolby Atmos renderer and the input configuration to define all beds, we have here the standard configuration from the Dolby Atmos renderer. Uh, let's clear all because a bed, what is a bed? Well, basically, uh, it's a multi-channel audio. And the simplest form that we know of multi-channel audio is called stereo. And this is a bed. It's purple, as you can see, so it's a bed uh, with two channels and one will be fixed to the left speaker and the other one fixed to the right speaker. That's what we're used to call stereo and that's a bed. And the use of that is that, well, I tend to use them for effects returns and also for some audio elements of the arrangements that need to be like I would say everywhere at once all the time or that are, that are, don't need to be brought forward uh, in in the mix you know like ambiences or something like that so if we go back to the the generic default setting and as I said there are plenty of things to say about the description about the groups we will uh, reserve that for another day. And let's turn to Reaper now. And, and I have those few instruments. There's a piano, some kind of pad, and a, a drums, a few bars, just to explore what we can do with beds. So let's have a quick listen. Well, very basic. Um, just a small ambience. And let's start with this piano. This piano is basically a stereo recording and I would say thanks to Christian Henson and Piano Book and everything he does, this is the cool piano by Christian himself, uh, which is really, really great. Uh, and uh, well, let's say it's been sampled, but at the start there was a stereo recording. And say that we don't need to turn it into an object and we want to leave it as it is in the bed. Um, several ways to do it. Uh, first, let's look that it is a very basic stereo track rooted to my master. Remember that in my Atmos template, in my Reaper template, the master is a 10 channels. Uh, for feeding the main bed uh, and so let's move that to the other screen so it's next to the Dolby Atmos bar graph and let's see what's happening when it's on channel one and two then it goes to left right if I should send it to say three and four that would be a bit weird because uh, oh, let me solo the piano first um, so that's, uh, that's a bit weird because 3 is the center channel and 4 is the LFE and personally I don't use the LFE in music because I think that it may conflict uh, with the listener's experience depending upon the equipment that is being used uh, at the listener's place and um, already when I used to mix in 5.1 actually I was mixing in 5.0 uh, I've never used the LFE and I'm not doing it either. Um, 
in Atmos, then again, please comment uh, if you have a different experience. Uh, so five and six are going to the sides. Seven, eight to the rear. And nine and 10, something interesting happens. It's as I do have a 7.1.4 configuration as we talked about in the previous video. So it's going to the four channels and it's because of the, the movie theaters. Uh, movie theaters, they have those three channels behind the screen for the center speakers, the left and right speakers, uh, because that can be one speaker or many speakers that are fed with the same signal. Then they have uh, four and five, which are left, right on the walls, hand side, left hand side, right hand side walls. And then six and seven for the rear wall, the back wall, and left and right for the ceiling. So this is why um, since I'm feeding only, and uh, we can see that if I'm panning here my scent, if I'm panning on the left, so I have left, right, left, front, uh, uh, left, front, left, back, sorry, and right, front, right, back. So it's fitting all my four uh, ceiling speakers. So this is a very first easy way, let's say, that I want to have this piano left and right uh, behind me and um, well, done. I don't need any panning, I don't need any FX, and I'm sure that whatever happens, that will be uh, behind me. So that's a very simple and very basic way of doing things. But then again, we may want to have a more sophisticated situation to place our piano in our bed, and um, then we can use a plugin. So what we have to do if we want to use a panning plugin or any multi-channel plugin, the first thing to do is to shift all track and make sure it's become it's a 10 channels track. And then we can call our FX or Ria Surround Pan, uh, which is the uh, the new one. The Ria Surround plugin is still there, but it has been redesigned. And let's move that back to the other screen so we can see uh, we can see what it does to our piano and then well basically here yeah, I can edit all the input channels at once and move them around have the center speaker left and right sides here left and right back here and possibly send to the elevation speakers here uh, so that's another way for setting on piano uh, someplace in our bed. Um, but this approach is still that the one where we consider the piano is a stereo recording and we want to keep it as a, re as a stereo recording but just place the left and right channels in our bed. But in some cases and with some parts of the arrangement, we may want sometimes to fake a multi-channel recording as if this piano had been recorded with more microphones or with specific microphones. And in order to fake this, what we can do is use a plugin such as Penteo 16 Pro from Perfect Surround. Um, well, honestly, this is a plugin which is not on the cheap side. Um, the reason behind this is, well, of course, those plugins, it, it's not easy to design something like that. Uh, and also, you will find that many multi-channel plugins are targeting the movie industry. And we all know that there is more money in the cinema than there is in music. So that's uh, also a possible explanation. So what we have to do here is to explain to the plugin that we have a stereo input, but that the output which we want is a 7.1.2. Uh, make sure the channel order is the correct one for Dolby Atmos. It's left, right, center, LFE, sides, surrounds, 
elevation and if you need to change it it's in the parameters and there are all the, the classic options which are possible and then you can set your preferred one as default and the Dolby Atmos is the second one from the top LRC LFE side surround done and uh, then well let's have a listen <laughs> And normally, as we're listening in stereo, well, in binaural, in fact, bypassing the plugin changes nothing. The plugin is on, and now bypassed. And on again. It's not changing much. Oh, by the way, I didn't uh, let you know that the sound of this video is, is uh, actually the music is the output of the Dolby Atmos renderer, which is set to binaural. So for the moment, well, we're basically using stereo, so it doesn't change many things. Uh, but for the rest of the video, you may want to use headphones. Um, so it's not changing anything because that's the expected result um, when we bypass the plugin. Of course, it changes a lot here when I'm listening with my speakers because I have plenty of them. Uh, but the stereo down mix, of course, is and the, the plugin uh, tells us that the way uh, the parameters are set uh, make it so that the down mix will be perfect. And in some cases, we can if we tweak the parameters and there are plenty of them. And really, this is a great plugin. It's really plenty of possibilities. Uh, if you want me to make a video. Uh, about that, uh, let me know. I'd be glad to do it because it's really, really interesting and um, it's really, well, it's great. But here we are still in something where we don't want to treat our piano or to change it really. We just wish to change the way it has been recorded. Um, that's it. And now if we want to go beyond that and we want to start placing our piano in uh, a space that will be rendered, uh, one of the first thing we may do, and that's an, another solution, <coughs> which is to use a plugin such uh, as Dear VR Pro. Um, you may have noticed a few weeks ago, the people at Dia Reality, uh, the company behind those plugins, uh, used a nice picture of me and the saying, which is true, that I mentioned uh, and used a plugin uh, in a, a previous video. That was actually the first one I think I made about Dolby Atmos and mixing in Atmos. Um, I'm very pleased they did that. Uh, I would have appreciated though that they contacted me before uh, <laughs> or even after <laughs> but uh, i'm an easy to reach person as many of you know by now um, so um, but i'm saying this um, I, I really liked it that's there's no problem with it if someone at dear reality sees this video there's no pro I have no problem with that uh, but please ask before uh, <laughs> next time if there should be a next time and uh, but uh, i wish also to say that I'm not paid by anyone, uh, any company, and uh, not Reaper, not the uh, Penteo, not uh, Dolby, not and not the reality. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm not paid by anyone uh, for doing this. If I should be paid by someone, um, then I would tell you. Uh, I wouldn't do that without telling everybody. Um, so that being said, what the first thing we have to do with this plugin is to change the, its output format because by default it's binaural, but that's not what we want, even though we're listening with headphones because of YouTube. But uh, we want a 7.1.2 and um, this plugin also takes only one channel input. But fortunately, as we are fitting it with a stereo signal, uh, we can uh, choose to use either left, right, but or a sum of uh, both. So that's what we will use for now. And uh, we should start by just simply using the direct signal. So uh, basically here, you will see immediately it will start acting as a panner, in fact. So let's have a listen. And we can see that it has been summed to mono. If I bypass the plugin, then the stereo is back. 
now it's summed into mono and we can start moving our piano just as if it were somewhere around us or maybe behind or well, I kind of liked it here okay so now we have our piano but this is something that does not really exist in nature because in nature we would have also some kind of reverb or reflections. Uh, let's say that we're in a church, for instance. So we're still using all bed. And uh, let's see what this would do with the drums. Um, so we need to make sure that our drum track is 10 channels okay and well let's move that here and well the church maybe not what we want let's um, take an, an office hmm, why not and use that so. what about here hmm, nice and one thing that is especially great uh, with DMVR Pro is that you can also play with the distance and especially when automating say that the drums are further away and it can come forward go away um, so this allows us to go beyond uh, what we have done before and as you can see uh, this plugin I'm using on insert which means that it, it's really it, it it would make no sense to have such a plugin as an object because we, we would need to, to create 10 objects for the outputs and place them. Well, that's, that's why a bed is very useful uh, for that, that kind of things. But let's say that we want to create another space, uh, but that can be used by several objects. So, well, what we basically call a reverb. And uh, what we can do with that, let's get rid of our plugins here. Uh, what we can do for that is create a new track and uh, let's call it a verb. Well, sounds nice. Let's make sure then again that we have a 10 channels track. And let's assign an effect on there, on it, which could be very well cinematic rooms from liquid sonics which again is not a plugin on the cheap side but well we quite we can understand um and there's a stereo version which is great too but which is not really useful to us um ain't it precious so let's uh, let's see that's uh, six seconds a bit long uh, let's let's try our, our drums here and so I'm taking channels one and two, there's a stereo and entering the reverb into channels uh, one and two as well. And a great thing with this reverb so let's say it's used by all drums and all drums are placed before us. So they're entering the reverb on the front. But we can change and uh, say that we use the center input of the reverb. Or the sides. or the rear
or even the elevation speakers. And last but not least, let's say that uh, we want to use our pan also and make it so that uh, the panning of the drums is reflected uh, by the reverb. So let's put that a bit below so we can see the input levels and edit all channels. And a bit of elevation, maybe. And that's how we can use the pen uh, with the reverb. Uh, well, that's about um, all the things I wanted to show you today. There are other plugins, um, delay, a great, great delay I want also to talk about, same principles, and a few others uh, that are really, really nice, uh, like a kind of auto panning and auto moving, but compatible with 7.1.2. But that will be for a next video. Please. Uh, subscribe if you want and hit the bell if you want to be notified next time I'm putting a video up. Thank you very much for watching this far. Take care and see you soon. Bye!